Hi everyone, it's Chappies Crypto here again with another video um, about my 10K challenge or the 10K challenge that we're starting. So for me, the goal obviously is to turn $1,000 into $10,000 over 232 sessions ultimately. Um, I've been practicing for the last few weeks and this is just another practice session. I am using real money in my Bybit account to trade this. So, so the, the goal is to start for me on the 2nd of August, however, um, and I've started to trade and, and really just learning and trying to be as profitable as I can. Um, last night I had some trades, I did four trades for the evening, so I wanna just do a bit of a review of how I went last night. Um, so last night I'm in, I'm in Australia, so I started trading, I started looking at the charts at around eight o'clock in the evening uh, with the goal of not necessarily taking any trades, I was planning to go to bed and wake up and trade the US Open, however, um, I, was, I was looking at the charts and, I, and I'll, I'll show you what I was looking at. I looked at Bitcoin to start with and, and my goal when I actually start my sessions is I actually have a quick scan over all, all four of these um, particular coins. So I, I look at Bitcoin, Ethereum, ADA and XRP. So I'll show you what I was looking at last night with Bitcoin and I've just highlighted that because I'm going to go and focus on that in a minute. So if you see here when I was looking at the structure, um, which if you're unfamiliar with the TPO, I'd recommend you check out the TradeVets dot com website and have a look at their courses that they run or join the discord and you'll start to learn about um, this particular style of way of looking at the market but when i looked at this particular chart last night remembering the things when when i logged on um where my cursor is at the moment it was about this point here so the things to the right i couldn't see at that point so the market what i could tell is we're trading up at a structure to drop down over the last day or two and then taken a big pump up over the last 24 hours 24 to 48 hours and it was sitting in this structure so I felt like if you looked at the previous structure, we had a nice um, base here and it looked like there was going to ca cause a lot of resistance. So I was long biased. In other words, I felt like there's a high likelihood or probability that the market was probably going to move up. And so I was particularly looking for a long. I was prepared to go short, um, but I was particularly looking for a long trade because I just felt the bias was up and I could see um, the prices moving up and down here. So I was looking for a trade, potentially go to the upside. Now I was being somewhat aggressive with this move because I was hoping to catch um, the bounce off the bottom of the structure and trade it to the top. Um, so what I actually did, this tra this first trade I did was actually a, lot, a trade that I actually lost on. Um, so it was the first trade of the evening. And so when you, if you come into here, I've actually marked where I, where I entered the trade and I actually entered the trade, and I'm just gonna draw it for you. I entered the trade at roughly 8.30, um, which, is, which is around this point. And I actually took the trade. I'll just actually make sure I'm in the right place here. Um, I entered the mark. I entered this trade at the open of this candle. So sorry, I apologise. I, I entered this trade just here at this point. So this is where I entered. Because I, what was happening is that this, this, the price I felt had actually got to the bottom. We were one time framing up, <clears throat> and with one time framing, so that's the bottom, and then second candle started to move up. This third candle open, sorry, this third candle actually opened up here, um, but I felt like we were two, we'd had one, two candles up, and I felt like, you know what, at the open of this candle, I'm going to get in because I was hopeful it might drop down, but I was confident it was going to start to keep on going up. Um, I placed my stop loss, and and the reason I placed my stop loss here, and I'll actually show you that my, my thought process I was going through. I placed my stop loss here at this red line, and the reason I did that because I had actually entered at the open of this candle, so I opened here. And I placed my stop loss just below the previous candle because I felt like my methodology was if we're one time framing up, this will come down possibly. But if it doesn't break this, then I was confident that the next candle would go and continue to move its way up. With the goal of obviously hitting to the top of structure. So this is what's referred to as a, a range trade. Um, unfortunately, because my stop loss was very tight, but once again, method thought process is if I put it here, if it breaks down through that, then my, my particular trade plan is invalidated and I need to get out. And sure enough, within not too far, so got to my trade, traded down here. Um, the next candle opened up at this point and it went up. I was starting to get, it, you know, I was starting to feel like, all right, the trade looks like it's going to go where I want it to do. And then it started to come down and sure enough, bang executed me and then got me out of the trade. So that was my first trade for the night and wasn't a great way to start, I was a bit frustrated. And sure enough, if you watch what happened, uh, my thought process was correct. Um, the price did actually eventually go up and get to the top of that particular range. Um, so that would have been a nice trade. However, um, I was I was okay with that fact that because for me, it was really about this one time frame and I felt that was the time the move was gonna happen. However, it happened a little bit later in the evening. 
Um, so if I go back to my Bybit account for a second and have a look to see the results of that particular trade, you'll see here that that trade there was the first trade of the evening for me. Um, so we were down $12.35 at that point. So for me, I actually opened this, this particular trading session with $1,059 in my trading account. And so my goal was to try and make about $10.50 or 1% or was my goal. So at this stage, I am currently $12.37 down. So I wasn't feeling on top of the world too much, not a great way to start. However, that's fine. Um, I just kept on looking at the charts and waiting patiently, as patiently as I could for the next trade setup. Um, I do find at times BTC doesn't move like some of the other um, coins move and I find that Ethereum XRP and ETH at times um, and ADA sometimes uh, make better moves. So I, I do keep my eye on the other charts and I was keeping my eye on ADA. So at about 10, 10.07 or just after 10 o'clock last night, I noticed that ADA um, was starting to form a really tight structure here. So if you can see what I mean by this, is that this was starting to tighten up. And what I noticed is that it was really struggling. The price was struggling to go past the POC. This is the POC, this white line on go charting. And this is the VWAP. So when you've done the course with Bitcoin Brad through the trade vets, he talks about the fact that this is almost like the battle line, or sorry, the, 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 the score of the game. If price is staying below this, then we know that sellers are winning. If prices are staying above that, we know that buyers are winning. So I felt like the price was coming down here and it was doing this. And it felt like the sellers were starting to win this little battle. And I, and I just, I just my trade plan was, you know what, if, if we break this little structure here, if we break this line, which is a breaker structure, and we're setting up for what can be referred to as a bit of a corner kick here, um, not necessarily a corner kick, but I just felt like, you know, if this breaks here, I think this price is probably going to do this. And so I actually decided that if we break here, this particular candle on this next one here, that's my going to be my entry point. And sure enough, that, that started to play out. And so I placed my trade here. Somewhat, in a, once again, an aggressive short, and I placed a short trade here. And, I f and when I looked back at structure, I decided that if we break down this, that's a good sign, and I'm going to keep my eye on it. If we break here, and I'm, I'm particularly looking at these points over here, if we break these two, two candles, I'm going to keep a real close, close eye on this because back here on previous structure, we had some value forming. So this area here was an area that I knew that was going to cause some resistance. So I kept my eye on the trade, um, and I do this all the time. I, I would have I would have naturally set a, a limit order when I placed this trade. I probably would have put a limit order down around this point. Um, however, what I was doing, I was, was watching here, and I was ready ready to go that if this price stalled and started to come back, I was ready to pull back and grab that out. And sure enough, when the, when this particular trade was happening, this actually happened only within about. 20 minutes or so, not even that long, the price had come down and it started to do this. It started to bounce at this point. And because I felt it bouncing, I just felt like, you know what, I think this trade's done. And I was looking at the the, um, the cluster. And if you actually scroll in here, you'll actually see what I mean by that. <clears throat> so we zoom right in. On my go trading template, um, I actually have this cluster showing. And I, I use them to just have a look at price. Uh, and, and to see what's happening and just give me an indication of momentum. I'm not looking at the historic prices necessarily, but I'm really, well, I do sometimes, but I'm really looking at the, the, the change in price here. And if the price was at this moment, you'd see this number changing. Uh, what I noticed here is that this number and this started, started to be much more significant than that side, which made me feel like the buyers were starting to win. And so I cut that trade. I took out the majority of my position. I took about 75% at that point. And then it started to come back and I took the balance out, not too much, not, not much too much further up. So... That was a fantastic trade. I was really happy with that. Second trade for the night. And we'll go and have a look at the results of that trade in Bybit. And press search. And you'll see here because I, I got a place that trade and I got out in two different lots. That was the results of that trade there. That was a short ADA, my entry, and I made roughly $22 profit on that trade. So at this stage, $12 minus plus 22, I'm about $10 in front. So I've almost hit my 1% goal at this point. But of course, um, I'm keeping my eye on the rest of the tr rest of the movements, and because we'd had this big reversal back up, uh, I started to notice also that Bitcoin and the other the other coins were starting to move the other direction. So I felt like you know what, um, we may be on we may be on the way back up here, and I was looking around the charts and I did notice that XRP had had a nice dip, um, and so for me it looked like that was the next probable trade, or the next best probable trade. Um, and on this particular chart, what I did notice, which I really liked with XRP, is that the price was doing this. 
and you'll see this really nice tightening and constriction of the price here which made me feel like we're going to have a breakout sure enough it broke down and that's actually when um, ada broke down i wasn't paying that much attention to the chart at that point because i was in that ada trade i'd exited my ada trade and i saw the price here starting to do this and i actually had um the bitcoin chart opened at that same time and the bitcoin chart had actually had already moved and so when i actually noticed that bitcoin was actually up at this point and around that 10 30 mark by the time i'd noticed what was happening bitcoin was actually up here and i felt like you know what i've missed that trade on bitcoin let's keep an eye on, on xrp here because this may actually follow bitcoin's move um, and sure enough um, i actually decided that if i mean, if if this price gets past this particular point and i'll actually show you which point i was looking at if the price gets past breaks through poc so if this if the price broke through this part here and so remember we're in this candle is going up um, if the price broke the poc and i was particularly interested to see if it broke through this candle here and which is getting close to the view up um, it broke that candle so i actually placed my trade at this point now this trade was an interesting trade because what actually happened is that price came up which was great and i was in a you know i was in probably five or six dollars profitable position and then it came down and I actually had my I had my stop quite tight. I actually had my stop loss sitting just here below the POC because I didn't really want to give away too much of my profits that I've made so far because I'm sitting almost one percent in front at the moment. And the price came. The price actually when I, when it passed here actually did this for a while. And I came with only a dollar two, or you know, I came very close to breaking back through my stop loss. However, I was very patient. I didn't move my stop loss because I was willing to just take the loss if it, if my trade plan hadn't worked out. But it eventually did go. Um, <clears throat> I was I wasn't overly confident this trade was going to go all the way through, so I actually had my take profit at this point because I was just interested to see if it would take these stops, which it did. It took that one. The price stalled here, and because I actually was pretty happy at this point that I was actually in a profitable position, it came up, and then I took the rest of the position out at that point. Um, at that point, I locked in some more profits, which I was pretty happy with as well. Um, but sure enough, because I'm watching four charts simultaneously, and once I place my trade, I'll, I'll zoom in quite closely on this four chart layout. Um, and just so you understand the way that I actually use the go charting tools, I'll actually zoom in quite closely here. I'll just get rid of that, prep, the, sorry, the, the rectangle there. I'll, I'll zoom in quite closely so I can see the price action. I'll have my levels marked so I can see if the price is getting close just so I can keep my eye on the trade. Um, but I did notice something ha interesting happening with ETH. I'd actually noticed it much earlier in the evening, and I'll show you what I actually did. And I'd actually set up a conditional order with this, and to be brilliantly honest with you, I'd forgotten I'd placed it. And so when I was actually looking at ETH early in the evening and looking at the structure, um, one of the things I really thought was quite interesting with ETH is that similar to what was happening with, with Bitcoin early in the evening, I'm just going to get rid of that so you can focus a little bit here. One of the things I noticed is, and this was from about 8 o'clock when I first opened up the charts, I noticed that that ETH was really struggling, so it had actually come down here, and the price was doing this. It was bang against the VWAP, came up again, bang against the VWAP, struggle to get past the POC, struggle to get past POC, and broke down through when ADA and the rest of them went, and that went and then went up. But what I actually did was because I saw this doing this to like two times, third time, I felt like this was the new point. This is a new breakout zone. So I actually placed a conditional long order on ETH and I just left it there. Um, I went off and I was looking at the other charts and to be honest, as I said before, I forgot I'd actually left that long there. I would have picked that up before I'd finished the session. However, I'm really glad I did because what happened after this breakdown and XRP, the rest of them broke up, I noticed in Bybit, the conditional order got triggered and it, and it broke through here. Um, I, I when I watched this trade, it broke through. I was in good profit. I was thinking, how good's this? I'm going to make a really good return, and then the price started to retrace. When it started to retrace, I took out a chunk of the chunk of that position. It came down here. It almost broke back all the way through. Um, at this point, I'm feeling like you know what? I'm about to give away my profits because my stop loss. I had my stop loss reasonably. T I think I had it around this point here. I actually probably had it originally under the POC, but when we broke up here, I would have had it tight just under the wee up most likely. Um, price is coming back down here, and I, I I felt like this is this is the time. So when the price was coming back down here, as I said, I took out I took out my first chunk here. It, it's, it did this for a little bit, and I just didn't feel like we we're going to go anywhere because it was just doing this. Um, so I took close out the trade. I was happy with the trade. And so for that whole evening, I ended up actually making 2.8% return for the evening, which is well beyond the, um, the goals I had.
for the trade or for that particular session but I was pretty happy with those results and I'll just quickly show you on the ETH on that last trade that I just went through this was the returns for that particular trade um, so ten dollars in the bag which is great just add it to the previous so in the end I ended up with um, a profit of twenty nine dollars and seventy nine cents which takes my my trade my trade balance or my account balance up to ten also one thousand eighty nine dollars and one cent uh, so really good session for me that last night I'm happy with that I'll be trading again um, in a few hours time um, but I thought I'd share my my trade reviews of, of last night's um, trades and before I before I say anything else I just want to point out if you'd like to learn how to trade using the time price opportunity check out the tradevets.com uh, guys that run this particular website uh, Bitcoin Brad and 3M Trader um, if you come into the other site here you can click on the socials and get connected up to the discord uh, which is this first icon here I highly recommend you do that it's free to join the discord and you can come on there and there's lots of guys trading actively sharing the trade plans and just generally talking about um, what market profile is actually all about um, but they also have some courses uh, they have a course that you can do called the TPO bootcamp it goes over five days great great course I did that two weeks ago and I'm really applying a lot of that knowledge and one of the big things I'm learning is to not over trade so be patient um, take your time um, be really careful with with what you're doing manage your losses um, and I think you'll you'll hopefully um, start to get some good results as I said I've only been training now since about February um, I'm expecting to take quite some time to, to, to become profitable on a really consistent basis. Um, but there you go. I just thought I'd share with you my next session or my last session of practice trading with real money. Um, we're on the way. So $1,000 to $10,000 challenge over 232 sessions ultimately or roughly a year is the goal. Um, and there you go. So if you go down to the bottom, read the description. Um, appreciate any likes and any commentary you might have. And until next time, I will see you on the discords. Bye for now.